hello everyone and thank you for uh, joining us uh, this evening I'm, intru uh, I'm interviewing uh, Peggy Johnson Peggy just recently took over as the CEO of Magic Leap the augmented and mixed reality company which is one of PIF investments in her uh, short time there she already realigned the company around a new set of priorities including the application of augmented reality in, in the enterprise sector. Magic Leap, uh, under the leadership of uh, Peggy, stands to innovate uh, and uh, change the way we work and live. So welcome, Pe Peggy. Thank you. Thank you, Turkey. It's wonderful to be back in the kingdom. Thank you. Uh, anyone who has followed Magic Leap or the augmented reality industry is aware of the challenges that was surrounding Magic Leap. So can you tell, uh, tell us a little bit why uh, did you make the decision uh, to lead Magic Leap and what did you find? Right, yeah, I jumped from Microsoft to Magic Leap and Magic Leap had had a challenging year. Um, but we've been turning around recently. I think if you've seen any of the recent press, we've made additions to the management team. Uh, we've bolstered the technology. So we're on a very good path. And I felt that with my background in enterprise from both Qualcomm and Microsoft, I could help the company. But it's interesting. Um, I think the, the whole segment of AR, the industry sometimes struggles with what is the use case for it. And Magic Leap had just made the pivot to enterprise, and I just helped the team narrow the focus a little bit more. We're, focused, as you said, healthcare, telco, industrial, and public sector. But I have to say, when I got to the company, I found it, was a, it had a strong foundation. There was a diverse, high-performing engineering team. Um, they built a product that worked. It, and it's very hard to build augmented reality. It's not virtual reality, you're actually placing digital content in the physical, physical space around you. And the engineers had done that. And they'd also, they'd built an impressive product, an impressive software platform, and a patent portfolio that is significant for a company that size. So essentially, all of the elements were there for success. So I, I jumped at the chance to take the reins of the company. Um, and I think even the, public investment fund in, with your investment saw the, really the potential for augmented reality and what it could do. And I think with the focus on enterprise, we're off to a, a really good uh, restart. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about your experience uh, transitioning during the pandemic and also touch what is your current priority now? Sure. So I actually uh, made a major career transition during a pandemic. All of my interviews as CEO were virtual. And uh, to this day, I still haven't met all of my management team in person, but we, we use the Magic Leap devices, so I've met them all, all virtually. But, you know, essentially, my priority at the company is to make the most useful and usable augmented reality device, period. And um, that's what we're focused on right now. And even ourselves, we are, f are looking at the technology internally to Magic Leap, because we're the best you know, users of the technology. It's a great way to fine tune something. So we've been using it recently to hold board meetings in. So we've developed an internal app that allows us to uh, put on the device, and we have board members from all over the world, essentially. And they put on the device, you, just for a little primer on augmented reality, when you put the device on, you still see the world around you. And we can place digital content into that world. It can be text, it can be audio, video, it can be people, like the people you see right here. So our, our board members put on the devices and from wherever they're at, we are actually in a board meeting. And it has been amazing to see. We had one of our designers put up screens. You know, you can put up a number of screens around and every board member in their own physical space can see those screens. 
So it's, it's quite amazing technology um, that we've really made the, the right pivot into the enterprise space. Uh, a couple of other things that we've, we're doing with the technology, we've been working with Ericsson on an industrial application. So they uh, took the device and they walked into a factory and they want it to be able to examine the workflow for the production process. And with the device on, uh, you can walk around and see the physical factory, but above each machine, you can see the uptime of the machine or the faults that the machine has had. If the machine's offline, you can actually, with the device on, make a call to an expert. So the expert doesn't have to fly in anymore. You can actually have the expert from their desktop see what the worker in the factory sees. So it's a great way to improve efficiency and certainly cut back on travel, for, for sure. Um, but another area that I'm super excited about is healthcare, the, the other area you mentioned. Because with healthcare, it sort of makes uh, the anatomy come alive. And you know, if you've ever s looked at an MRI or a CAT scan, they're, they're very 2D. And so we've been working with a number of healthcare companies uh, like you see here, and you can make parts of the anatomy come alive in 3D. You can expand it, you can walk around it. For the heart, you can go inside the heart. So it's, it's a wonderful training tool. Uh, there was an amazing use case just a few months ago um, with these uh, conjoined twins. A university in California, U UC Davis, had a surgical team, and they were responsible for the separation of these twins. And they used the device, it's a 30-person surgical team, to train that team, because that's a complex surgery. And they were able to examine the surgical pathways that the, the brains of the twins, very unique formation, uh, everybody was able to learn. And um, it, so it's a great way to not only plan surgeries, but also talk to the parents, or if you're getting surgery, to see a little bit more what's gonna happen. It, it really makes it come alive, and I'm happy to say that uh, this surgery was, was quite successful, so I think we'll see more training of uh, pre-surgical training with these sorts of devices. Okay, great. That's very interesting. But, you know, in reality for technologies like augmented reality, we are still in very early stage of adoption. So how do you see these kind of the technologies rolling out and uh, why they are better than uh, what we have currently? Well, you're very right, Turkey. It is still early days of adoption for AR. But you know, I was in, uh, at Qualcomm, I was in the mobile phone industry for many, many years. And I liken it to the same trajectory as a mobile phone. If you remember in the early days of mobile phone, uh, phones at the time were big, they were heavy, they were expensive, and largely they were bought by enterprises because they were the ones who could find the early ROI with the device. And essentially, what we saw was people like uh, salespeople who were working from their cars uh, would have to stop and make phone calls, find a phone booth, make a phone call to check in with their office. And they found that this new thing called the mobile phone would actually allow them to stay in their car and get more time in their day. AR is on the exact same trajectory. So we'll see that uh, over time, starting with enterprise, where there's currently ROI use cases right now, that'll drive more adoption, which will drive a smaller size, a lower cost, more content. So it'll come down that same curve. But I think if you look at the digital transformation industry more broadly, um, AR fits right in there as an early uh, technology. And as people adopt it, They'll see, oh, others have adopted it, and uh, it could help my business too. And so we are, we're, we're excited to continue to talk to uh, a variety of enterprises because that'll, you know, that will bring the price point down over, over time.
Oh, the, the, that sounds very disruptive. I think we have just a few seconds left. If it, it would be great if you could share with us your thoughts on the technology post-COVID, especially in our society going forward. Yeah, so I think a common refrain that um, we've had amongst uh, a lot of uh, people is that COVID is going to change everything, and I think that's true. But this is a technology that can actually help bolster the economy post-COVID because it, it can introduce uh, some efficiencies. In fact, I'm, I'm excited. We just announced a partnership with Saudi Aramco uh, to work with them on using the technology for remote collaboration and 3D visualization. So we're really excited to be here in the kingdom and working with Saudi Aramco on, on that use case. Thank you very much, Peggy, the, the, for your time and your valuable insight uh, in augmented reality, mixed reality, and technology. And thank you all for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you. In the beginning, it was there, hidden beneath us in its natural form. From its essence, we built our present and a brighter future for generations to come. It flowed through the veins of our land and chose us as a home. It gave us energy for our mission on the ground and our vision up high. We harnessed its powers and reaped its rewards. Hand in hand, we created better solutions. And now, with pride, we benefited from our investment and invested in the future of our youth. Energy has its home.